Hello and welcome to Piano Shack with me, Woody. Thank you for tuning in. So this is from 1994. This is from 2012-ish, about 20 years later. Just how far has synth technology evolved over the course of 20 years? Well, in this video, we are going to find out. All right, I've prepared a little slideshow for you, but don't go anywhere. This will be very brief. I just want to highlight some of the differences between the units before we move on to the sound demonstration. Presets then. The JV1080 has 648 PCM. This is the sample and synthesis technique that Roland have been using since the D50. The Integra, on the other hand, has over 6,000. Roland don't say exactly, but if you're wondering how that is comprised, then we have two different sound engines on the Integra, the Supernatural and the old PCM, inherited from the 1080. For the Supernatural, then, it's a combination of samples and physical modeling. We have 256 acoustic Supernatural, 1106 Supernatural synth, where they're modeling the circuitry of vintage synthesizers. There are 896 PCM tones, 256 general MIDI, 1000 user, and we're still not at 6000, so if you're wondering where the other sounds are coming from, it's from the SRX expansion tones that are built in. ROM wave memory, an interesting technical specification that we'll dig into here. The 1080 is widely known to be 8 megabytes of wave ROM memory, that's where the sounds are stored. But you can expand it with 32 megabytes, comprising of four 8 megabyte expansion cards. These were optional, cost about 100 bucks, and still do on the used market. The Integra is much more capable, as you would expect. We have 384 megabytes as far as we know. Now, Roland don't publish the official figures anymore, but very a very helpful chap on the internet has done a teardown of his Integra, examined the chips and established that it looks like there's 384 megabytes of ROM memory. Then we have 1864 megabyte expansion ROMs built in as well, and maybe some more, we'll get onto that later. So I think if my calculations are correct, it's about 100 times more ROM memory on the Integra that came 20 years later. That's Moore's Law for you. Oh, talking of expansions then. The JV1080 accepted SRJV80 cards. These were eight megabytes each, and there are about 20 of them that were made. The Integra then is much more capable and interesting as you would expect. There are four virtual slots. We no longer have physical expansion card slots. And then on board, we have 12 of the SRX series expansion cards. These are 64 megs each, and you can choose those and load them into the virtual slots. Also, there are supernatural expansions. These are also 64 megabytes each, and there are six of those. Plus, you can use all four of the virtual slots to load a single 256 megabyte General MIDI high quality sample bank. Polyphony, polyphony, and parts. So the 1080 had 64 notes at the same time. That's the polyphony. Although in real life, you got less than that because most of the patches were slightly more complicated and that robbed you of some of the polyphony. You could play 16 parts at the same time. That's the multi timbre la 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 the Integra has 128, just twice as much, also 16-part multi-timbre la 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 -ty. It's a bit of a shame the Integra didn't get the 256 poly of the Jupiter 80. Effects then? The 1080 has 40 different insert effects. You can put one on each channel, plus a master reverb and chorus. The Integra, as you would expect, builds on that and even adds the emotional surround feature that I have yet to test. Connectivity. 1080 was pretty simple with six analog outputs and MIDI. The Integra, well, it's bang up to date with USB and digital coax outputs. I'll now play for you some sounds on the 1080 and the Integra. And my strategy here was to 
play some sounds on my favorite presets on the 1080 whilst recording the audio from the 1080 and the MIDI that I was playing. I then chose a similar preset on the Integra and played back the same MIDI file. The Integra does actually contain all of the sounds from the 5080, the 2080, and therefore the 1080. So in some cases, I chose exactly the same sound on both. Now you'd expect these to sound exactly the same, but there are some differences in the internal circuitry, the digital to audio converters and the internal sample rates. I know some of you guys are interested in that. So here we've compared exactly the same sound on each module. Then in some cases, if there's a supernatural sound available, I've chose to use that on the Integra with the assumption that it will have a more realistic and better sound. And then in other cases, I've just not quite nailed exactly the right preset. It's going to sound a bit different, but it does make things a bit more interesting. On the waveform display, the track at the top is the 1080. The track below is the Integra. And when you see me playing the keyboard and I'm playing the sound on the 1080. Let's get started.
What then is the summary of all of this? If in fact there is one, I'll let you guys come to your own conclusions and please share those in the comments. But for me then, well, obviously some of the supernatural sounds were more realistic on the Integra than the JV1080. But overall, I was so blown away on playing the presets of the 1080. I couldn't believe they were 20 years old. They sounded still fantastic and fresh today. So my summary, yeah, the synthesizer sounds and some of the pads and the non-acoustic sounds still sound really, really great on the 1080. Of course, we have seen some significant improvements on the Integra as well, but maybe not as much as you would expect, at least if you're sticking to the non-acoustic sounds. I've really enjoyed playing both. And remember, this one is $1,500 if you buy one new today. This one, obviously you can't buy new, and these are selling for less than $200 these days. That's a massive bargain. In fact, all of these 90s and noughties Rompler rack synthesizers are really, really cheap these days. And that gives me a new idea for a new series. Yes, let's buy as many of these unloved, forgotten, and therefore dirt cheap synthesizers as we can, put them in a rack and see what compositions we can create using them today. Stay tuned for that then, we'll call it Woody's Rack of Cheap Synths or something. Actually, I'd like to get some better names from you people, so let me know in the comments. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it to be somewhat informing, entertaining and interesting. If so, let me know in the comments either way. Thank you very much for liking and subscribing by the way, and I'll see you soon for more videos about the Integra and the JV1080, plus lots of other fun stuff. I'll see you then. Cheerio.